Welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today, I'm talking about Yosemite National Park and the things you need to know before visiting this natural wonder. There are so many things to know about this national park. It's roughly the size of Rhode Island, meaning it is 1,189 square miles. That's a lot of ground. I've visited this national park dozens of times throughout the year, and as a California resident, I'm constantly going back for more because there's so much to see here. Every time I stay here, I notice something new. So I'm passing along the information to you so that you know the best places to take photos, the best hikes, where to stay, and some things to avoid. So you wanna to stay tuned to the end so that you are prepared for your trip. Some facts about Yosemite. Yosemite is known for its deep valleys, granite rock, half dome, and the 3,000 foot sheer cliff of El Capitan, which attracts rock climbers from around the world. Yosemite is a legendary California landmark established in 1890 as the third national park in the United States. It's located in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It is some of the most breathtaking landscape. And as the famous environmentalist and conservationalist John Muir said, it's by far the grandest of all special temples of nature I have ever been permitted to enter Yosemite National Park. How to get here. Yosemite is accessible via car and you're most likely going to take your private vehicle into the park. There are five entrances. I'm gonna put the map right here. Hetch Hetchy, Big Oak, Arch Rock, South Entrance, and Tioga Pass. The entrances are open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. However, each entrance is situated towards different sites within the park, and some of the entrances may be closed. So which entrance should you choose? Well, it depends on where you're coming from. So if you're coming from LA, you're going to hit the South Entrance, and this is located near Oakhurst, California. You can either stay outside of the park in Oakhurst, which is only 15 minutes from the entrance, or you can stay within the South Entrance area at Wawona. There's a historic hotel here called Wawona. There's a golf course. There's the Mariposa Grove with 2,000 year old trees. And there's even a steam train, which is fun for the whole family. We stayed just outside of the park at the Holiday Inn Express. Oakhurst has a number of national hotel chains, so it's very comfortable to stay here. One thing to note is be sure to get into the park before 10 a.m., preferably before 8 a.m., because you will experience long lines getting into the park. And I'm going to insert a time-lapse video here. If you're coming in through the Bay Area, you're gonna enter the park through the West Entrance, which is the Arch Rock area. And the nearest cities are Merced and Mariposa. So you can definitely stay there as well. You can stay near Hetch Hetchy as well at the Evergreen Lodge. And this is a great area to unplug and reset because there's not a lot of internet service. And the cabins here are very basic. They don't come with TVs or a lot of technology. So it's a great place to really get away from it all. And the lodge here is roughly $144 per night. This area is, or was known as Yosemite's second valley. A dam was constructed in this area, which caused water to fill up in the valley. And it looks completely different today than it originally did. The dam was constructed to provide drinking water to the regional San Francisco area. And John Muir, the writer and environmentalist, helped to prevent further commercial interest in Yosemite. And in fact, the National Park Services was started in 1914 to protect the area from things like this ever happening again. So if you're coming in through the Sierras, such as Mammoth or Lee Vining or Mono Lake, you will enter through the Tioga Pass. Please note that this area is frequently closed due to snowfall, especially between November and spring. So check the National Park website to make sure the roads are open during your visit. Let's talk about roads. So when you're traveling through Yosemite, plan for very curvy roads not a lot of guardrails, 
the mileage is around 25 miles per hour, so it can take you quite a bit of time to travel throughout this park. To get from the Yosemite Valley to the Glacier Point took about an hour, so that's quite a distance and quite a drive. I also recommend driving here during the daytime because a lot of the roads don't have guardrails and because of those hairpin turns, it can be kind of treacherous and I do recommend traveling during the best visibility time. If you don't want to deal with coming in and out of the park, I recommend staying in Yosemite Valley. Be sure to book your accommodation six months plus in advance because it sells out very fast. And there's every type of accommodation from your basic campsite with bathroom facilities to the five-star hotel, the Owani Hotel. Now, this hotel is very historic. It also served as the inspiration to the hotel in the movie The Shining. So if you're a movie buff, definitely check it out. You do not need to stay here to enjoy the hotel. You can walk through it as a visitor. They have some beautiful Native American artwork throughout the hotel. There's a dining hall, which is really cool. But if you do stay here, plan to spend about $500 a night. This is where a number of famous people have stayed, including dignitaries, and even Steve Jobs had his wedding here. If you're looking for something more budget-friendly, you can check out the Cedar Cottage or the Yosemite Valley Lodge. Those are both great options. So what is the most populated part of Yosemite? That is the Yosemite Valley. So this right here is called the Yosemite Valley. It's like a meadow in between the majestic granite mountains. And it's the most popular region for visitors. This is where all the cars are traveling to when they enter the park. This is where the eateries are, the lodges, the visitor center, the campsites. Everything is in the Yosemite Valley. It's also where you can get some of the most spectacular views and also enter some of the hiking trails, including the Yosemite Falls hiking trail, the tallest fall in the park. This right here is Half Dome, the icon of the national park. It's 8,842 feet tall. Down below, we have Vernal Falls right down there. It's 317 feet tall. And then Nevada Falls, which drops 597 feet. Beautiful. The next question is when to visit Yosemite. So 75% of visitors visit between May and October. These are the most crowded periods and the most crowded season is summertime. So if you wanna visit a more peaceful time of year, I recommend early November. This is when we went and it was really peaceful and beautiful to be in the park without a lot of crowds. Only a fraction of the park is traversed by visitors. So even if you visit within summertime, you will definitely find parts of this park with lots of peace and solace. If you're hiking here, you're going to be hiking on a lot of slippery surfaces, including granite rock and pine needles. So be sure to bring some really sturdy hiking shoes with you, have a first aid kit with you. The internet access within the park is very spotty. I was surprised to get internet at all within a national park, but if you're going off the beaten path or on some of the hiking trails, be sure to carry a satellite phone, download the map to your phone, have a paper map with you. Also have a meetup place in mind because it is very, very easy to get lost within this park. I've actually gotten lost within this park before and it's, it's a little scary. So be sure to have a meetup point in mind. So for food, I recommend bringing in a picnic from outside the park and checking out some of the picnic tables and picnic areas. There's also the visitor center, which has a number of food options as well. And the Wani Hotel has an extraordinary dining room with floor to ceiling windows. Okay, this right here is a map and we drove from this entrance, the south entrance through Wawona to Glacier Point. It took us about 50 minutes and now we're at one of the most stunning viewpoints. If you're looking for the best view, I recommend going to the high altitude points first. So check out Glacier Point or the Washburn area. And these areas are above 3000 feet high and you can get this beautiful, expansive bird's eye view of the entire Yosemite Valley from Half Dome all the way to the Yosemite Falls. We're at Glacier Point, 360 degree views of the Yosemite Valley.
and Half Dome. And this is Glacier Point. One of the most spectacular views on earth. There's something for everybody within Yosemite, whether you're traveling with kids or pets, or you're looking for the best campsites, rock climbing, there's something for everyone. This national park has a number of different altitude variations, so I was surprised to know that Half Dome is not the highest part of this national park, even though it's above 8,000 feet high. The highest point is Mount Lyell, which is 13,114 feet high. So there you have it. I hope that you get a chance to visit Yosemite very soon. What are your tips to visit Yosemite? Comment below and be sure to like and subscribe this video to support more videos like this. And I hope to see you in our next travel video. Cheers.